What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. Our guest, left tackle and brand new dad, brand Jake new Matthews. Dad. And by brand new, like November 10th, brand new, like (laughs) pretty recent. Uh, We're going to get to all that. But before we get to that crazy story Mm -hmm. of how Jake made it back to see Beckett, his first son, be born and still play on Thursday Night Football. Crazy. Let's go back to the gender reveal moment. Scott has been watching this video. I've seen it like five (laughs) times today (laughs) because it's basically the greatest reaction ever. There's There's like a smoke canister. And when it goes blue, your reaction, take me through the moment. Like, did you not know going into it? I had no idea. And wow. my wife, Maggie was, you know, leading up to it. Like, Hey, what do you, you know, what are you thinking? Do you want a boy? Do you want a girl? And I was like, I just, I want a healthy kid. And you know, just a standard <laughs> middle of the road answer. And, um, yeah, when I, when I saw the blue, I, you know, just subconsciously kind of hit me. I, I think it was pretty obvious what I wanted. <laughs> it, um, I was pretty excited. Yeah. You yeah. threw that. Uh, I don't even know what it was called. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. The little, the little rocket. Way ball. up in the air. Yeah. I, this is the type of hard hitting journalism that we do here on this podcast. I counted. It yeah. was up in the air for five seconds. Was it really? You must have thrown that thing to the moon. I almost felt bad afterwards because. Um, a lot of nieces and nephews running around, and I think it landed like a foot it away did. from my, <laughs> my two-year-old niece. So, yeah, if that had hit someone, probably wouldn't have been a good look. That's <laughs> so funny. Now, I want to go through the logistics of this because y- you go through the gender reveal, and, and you obviously know the due date, and it's like, oh, shoot, this is in the right smack dab in the middle of the season. How many different contingency <laughs> plans did you guys have kind of going into this season? Well, first and foremost, I, I did a horrible job because I just kept putting it off. <laughs> like, it's like, it's not happening. Yeah, I was like, that's months away. Don't worry about it. And um, my wife is very, you know, she likes to have a plan mm-hmm. set. So a lot of times, you know, give her credit and actually fault me. I was, you know, let's stop talking about it. I don't want to worry about it. Like, we'll, we'll deal with it when it happens. And that wasn't the best idea because I got hit with, basically the worst thing that could happen. So, um, no, but we, we kind of, the plan was for her to get induced on Sunday because mm. he was measuring kind of big and it looked like it was getting close. And I was like, all right, all you have to do is, you know, take it easy when I head out of town Wednesday and I play this game Thursday, we get back, we got the whole weekend, we'll get this thing figured out. And, um, that he, did not he, happen. He did not <laughs> go with that plan. <laughs> he did not cooperate. Yeah. So I, I'm sure a, a lot of Falcons fans have kind of heard this story, but take us back to it. So you get a phone call on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Take us through kind of what <clears throat> happened because you were in Charlotte and then bang, you have to go back to the ATL. Right. So it, it kind of starts, you know, short week, Thursday game, you know, long days. Where I'm, I'm here all day. But Wednesday she's texting me like, you know, I don't feel right. Something feels off. Like, I think I might be sick. And I'm like, oh man, that, you know, that sucks. You're this close to like, you know, the baby coming, you're not feeling well. But she, she had no idea that you, I think it was kind of the start of, you know, labor mm-hmm. kind of starting. And she, you know, felt like she had like a head cold or something, but it was weird. So I was like, all right, well just hang in there. I'll get back. Um, you know, everything's gonna be fine. Classic me, push it off. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you're yeah, fine. We'll, we'll be fine. I'll, I'll get back. We'll be good to go for Sunday. And then, um, Little did I know, actually, Wednesday night, she had gone to the hospital because she wasn't feeling well. And she didn't tell me because she didn't want to worry oh, me. No. She, oh, my goodness. She, wasn't, she didn't think she was going into labor. Yeah. So I go to bed, no idea. And um, I wake up at like 645 and the hotel phone is ringing, which is like a, a huge like indicator for me because, you know, we don't do wake up calls. Like, I haven't had a wake up call since I think my freshman year of college. Like, yeah. so that was like mm-hmm. right when that woke me up, I was like, something is, is wrong. And, um, I checked my phone she's called like six times <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and I, I start panicking and it's, it's just, what do I do? What do I do? Um, I'm on the phone with her and she's like, I'm in labor. Like, this is it for real. And, and me, I'm still trying to wake up. I'm like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> like You're, no, yeah, go back yeah, to bed. An, an idiot. And, um, <laughs> Yeah. So then it was like first panic. Uh, like, what do I do? Tell me what to do. And she's like, I don't know. You need to figure it out. So <laughs> she's like, the- I can't help you. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then it was, you know, it was like we had this team put together in the um, in the lobby of the hotel, you know, um, head coach Arthur Smith's there and our security people and um, 
Rich McKay and everyone, we're all like, you know, scrambling, trying to figure out, you know, how can we make this work? And at first it was like, you know, we're going to get a private plane figured out, you know, get you there, get you back. Everything's going to be good. I was like, all right, that, you know, that should work pretty well. It gives me a lot of time. And then eventually it's like 30 minutes later, it's too short notice. You, you, you got to drive. Like you got to make a decision right now. Do you want to drive or not? And I'm like, freaking out I'm like that's a three hour drive we could hit construction traffic yeah. like who knows what's going to happen and eventually art goes hey make a decision like you going or not and I'm like all right I'm going we'll, we'll figure it out and he goes we'll figure out the rest once you get there and it 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 was it was pretty wild that that was the point where I was like man this is that was the most stressful it's like do I get in the car and leave now or do we you know keep trying to figure something out because there was just so much up in the air and un, you know uncertainty mm -hmm. so um what did you listen to on the car ride there that's three <laughs> that i know hard-hitting questions that's yeah. three hours where you're kind of just sitting there like oh my I'm god maybe just silence i mean yeah. i don't know spot on just to, <laughs> to build suspense we didn't have <laughs> any music going but um oh my gosh like i remember to um because it was happening so quick that if they gave her the upper girl um, it, there was a chance that it could uh, slow things down. Right. So um, Maggie went through natural labor for five hours. Oh and it my was gosh! Just miserable because she's. I mean, she really is the MVP of this whole thing. Because yes, she no was, doubt. She's like, there's a time frame. I got to get you back. So she's calling me as I'm in the car, just screaming, and I'm. Oh I'm <laughs> You're like I'm trying my best. And I'm like I I yeah. It, <laughs> talk about feeling like helpless and out of control. Oh yeah. It, it, it's it sucked and um no really at one point i was just trying to do anything to distract myself i started watching film on my ipad <laughs> to prep for the game i was like I, just, I have to do something and um yeah we we didn't stop either and needless to say i had to use the restroom a couple times so <laughs> you can guess how we figured that out wow <laughs> just just keep on driving just keep going don't stop yeah. but but the the crazy thing is everything works out probably mm. exactly how you could have wanted Beckett's got a story forever. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and you end up making it for the birth of your son. Yeah. Arthur blank flies you back mm -hmm. and you're there in time for warmups. I know. Wow. It, the thing that sucked though, was that he was born at three seventeen PM and I had to leave by three thirty. Oh my so I, gosh. I got to hold him for like 10 minutes and then I was like, all right, love you guys. Bye. So, <laughs> talk about feeling like a, absentee father <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat right yeah but it's funny um, i think i tweeted out you're talking about maggie being the mvp yeah. i was like jake may have like so many consecutive starts and like all this stuff but i was like the true mvp of thursday night football was maggie the, no no question like the fact <laughs> that she even more. tweeted she's like i did my best like now he's on his way back i know, <laughs> I like, I know. it's like fantastic. this day's supposed to be about her she's the one <laughs> she's the one going through like <laughs> childbirth yeah. <laughs> i can't imagine and you know of course i had to selfishly take <laughs> the attention <laughs> now it's interesting though because we all know the story kind of like you you do get back to the game you play the game but what was it like after the game because you can you can go back home and essentially you talk about being with your son for maybe like 10 minutes and be like all right bye yeah. to come back home did you go back to the hospital as soon as y'all got back to atlanta like what was that next we're talking like 2 30 in the morning right yeah right. you landed Right. And I didn't get home till almost four. So she told me, you know, go home, get a couple hours mm -hmm. and, um, you know, get back to the hospital early. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> another example of how great she is and how much I suck. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm going to wake up. I'm setting my alarm early. I'm going to be there. Yeah. I slept right through the alarm. <laughs> I was so tired. I didn't get there till about 930. So <laughs> I felt awful about it. But no, but then I was there all day Friday, spent the night there. Friday night and Saturday, which hospital couches are not fun. They're not comfortable <laughs> no. for people who are regular size. Yeah. Let alone yeah. someone who's a little bit bigger than that. Right. Yeah. Not a lot of space there. Yeah. Yeah. Not but fun. <laughs> again, it's like, who am I to complain? So, <laughs> right. so I had to, you know, just fight through that. And, you know, it, like I said, it's hard for me to complain because she's the one who went through <laughs> right. everything. It's like, I really feel. It's like the adversity of the, the couch. It's like, oh, right. well. <laughs> couch versus birthing a child in a <laughs> with a specific time frame so yeah but um no every it, it, it was amazing because she's perfectly healthy he's healthy um even though he was you know he didn't even make it to 37 weeks he was pretty mm. he was technically premature and um 
man, just once I got back, it, it was awesome. Like I grew up, obviously I'm one of seven kids. So mm -hmm. I've, I've always been around children. I've loved kids. Um, but I, I, you know, yeah, there was a little uncertainty of like, how am I going to be as a dad? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I feel pretty confident saying it. I'm a pretty good dad. I, <laughs> I jumped right into it, uh, changing diapers, everything, um, unfazed. So I, I'm loving it. How's your sleep schedule? I have two kids, the early going, not a lot of shy. <laughs> right. Um, there, there's crying. It, 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 um, gosh, just to Maggie's credit again, she mm -hmm. understands like, hey, if you don't sleep, there's a chance you'll probably get hurt going out there. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Point. Yeah, so she usually, you know, she's doing the work throughout the day or throughout the night, and then I try to help during the day. But um, I wake up a couple of times, like, hey, can I help you? And, yeah. and I, you know, almost like a drunken <laughs> sleep. And it's like, no, just go back to bed. I get it. So I think the message, the main point from this whole conversation mm -hmm. should be is, I have an amazing wife, mm -hmm. so I can't yes. say that enough. Put yeah, that absolutely. in the title of the podcast, <laughs> yeah. 100%. Why Jake Matthews has a badass wife. Yes. Like, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> now, talking about family with Beckett, you know, first, first son and all, but your family tree is actually very interesting because... It's hard to even map out. It, there are so many... Uh -huh. <laughs> Scott and I were looking at it earlier, and... It has its own Wikipedia page. Did you know that? Does it really? Wow. There is one yeah. that is just Matthew's family football, and they break it down <laughs> from your grandfather being drafted like in the 40s or something yeah. all the way down, every detail. It's Somebody amazing. spent a lot of time on that. Yeah, no, it, it's very humbling and, and also really cool. I like bragging about it. Um, yeah, there's been eight of us that have made it to the NFL through, I guess, one, two, three, three generations. Yeah, so it's... It's pretty amazing. I mean, um, it all kind of starts with my my grandpa, though, my, my dad's dad. He he was incredible. He was like a, you know, state champion boxer, wrestler, um, drafted, played in the NFL, had like a amazing uh, life in corporate America, was the CEO of a couple companies. And um, he was the true badass. But, <laughs> um, yeah, but then obviously going to my dad, He's, he's pretty close up there. Right, if there's I was anyone about to say, I yeah. want to emulate my life, it's him. Mm -hmm. and, um, it, it's been challenging because the guy literally did it forever, holds every record, every accolade. So it's like, uh, how do I fill those <laughs> shoes? But um, no, I, I couldn't be more proud to have him as a father. And in sometimes kids don't get to see their dads play because of a certain age kind of uh, yeah. disparity, but he played, you were nine or 10 and he was still playing, right? Yeah. So what was that experience? Like mm -hmm. maybe tell us some stories from when, yeah. You know. Um, here's something to put it in perspective. He played from 1983 to 2001. So wow. that's wild. That's a long time. Yeah. And, uh, especially to play this position right. specifically. Right. He yeah. played all five positions on the mm -hmm. offensive line was really good at all five of them <laughs> so and, and he long snapped too he was the um now that's he, just rubbing it in yeah. i know Come it's on. like get yeah he, he, he did the field goal long snap all 19 years and he long snapped for punt for 15 years and i think wow. he actually is credited a couple tackles too going down <laughs> covering punts so um yeah he, he was really good at what he did obviously first ballot hall of famer and all mm -hmm. that stuff but no i think probably my coolest memory was um the 1999 season their first year becoming the tennessee titans mm -hmm. um moving to nashville and um i'm seven years old just a crazy year i i i remember the they call it the music city miracle mm -hmm. that you know home run throwback play they had against the bills in the wild card game on the the kickoff return that won it for them um going to the super bowl which was here in atlanta yeah which was you know that, kind of surreal you know as kind a kid. of full, full yeah, circle moment exactly. too as an adult going to the georgia dome as a kid and watching my dad play and then eventually that being my home stadium mm -hmm. too so um unfortunately they lost that super bowl mm -hmm. by one yard which oh. was, yes. you know one of the most oh. epic games of all time but um yeah that that year really sticks out to me for you you know he wasn't just playing but he was coaching for a while when you were younger too and yeah what was what was that kind of like? And and not just that, but as you kind of grew older and kind of had this whole identity in and of yourself to be like, I'm pretty good at this position too. Like I, I could see myself having a career in this. I mean, what was he kind of like in that role as not just like dad, but coach as well? 
honestly great. Some of my favorite years was when he was my line coach in high school. Mm-hmm. Like most fun I've had playing football. Um, but believe it or not, I was a quarterback all the way up until my sophomore year of high school. Were you really? I didn't, all I played was quarterback. And my dad, just more credit to him, he was actually emergency uh, quarterback throughout his career. Get like, out of town. If, wow. if there was like a drastic, like everyone got hurt, mm-hmm. they actually would practice sometimes where he would go in and <laughs> do a wow. couple of plays. Like wow. he really was a renaissance man. Good at <laughs> and actually punting too. He, literally could do everything the man he, i mean he, that's yeah, impressive you could see where my uh, insecurities might come from <laughs> <laughs> but um no just um i remember my sophomore year of high school they're like hey you can be the jv quarterback or you know we have a right tackle spot open on varsity and i remember thinking like man i really want one of those lettermans i think I'm about <laughs> to go out for varsity and my dad's the online coach and I remember the first meeting um, basically said, you pointed at my name on the depth chart. It had me at the very bottom. He's like, <laughs> See this name? He's like, I don't show any favorites. Jake, you're going to be your fourth string right now. <laughs> wow. By the end of the day, I was starting at right tackle wow. because I was kind of a natural at it. And, um, yeah, it, it was it, it was just really great memories looking back on that. Does he call like after a game? positive negative do you guys compare notes do, does he watch like a coach and a dad or how does he navigate that side of it absolutely all that stuff um yeah he gives it to me straight he lets me know <laughs> what looks good you know what needs to be improved and he, he's really been like a second coach to me my entire life mm-hmm. and i i have to give him credit for a lot of the success i've had was you know stuff that we talked about and worked on and um even in the off season like we'll go out in the field and you up to this day like i go out wow. once a week with him on the field and move around and do some stuff and talk things through and it's just really cool to get his perspective mm-hmm. and um some tips and, and and things that work for him because it's you know a lot of it's helped me and been relevant and off obviously two really cool bonding experience i mean how much to that end the fact that you kind of lived in this life for the first portion of your childhood and then to kind of have this part of the life become your own and and I'm talking about like NFL life I mean to that end how much do you think like seeing your dad be what he was and still is impacted you even today now you are on you know you have extended contracts and you've had a long tenure in the NFL already like what kind of has that been like and how do you see that kind of being parallel to you um, he, he definitely laid out the blueprint of how it's done. He, mm-hmm. he, my dad has always been a guy that you're going to show up. If you commit to something, you're going to see it through. You're going to work hard. You're going to do what the coach tells you. And, um, you know, you're not going to make excuses. And he instilled that in all of us from a young age. And it sounds kind of, you know, simple, but I, I really think those things hold true. Like those, are the, you know, guys that act like that are, you know, the players that coaches want on their teams. And he did that his whole career. So, it, you know, there's no no question why he was able to stay with one organization his entire career because they loved him. Um, but, no, I, in all honesty, I'm, I'm, I'm basically trying to copy <laughs> every, <laughs> everything he did. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, no, I, it, it, it's funny. I, I haven't thought about that in a while. But really just those things that – I remember signing up for um, baseball as a kid. Um, I had a thing going where – um, the football season was coming up and, and I was kind of you know tired of it. I kind of wanted to quit. Oh, no. Like, well, you know, I want to focus on football. And, and he absolutely not like, you, <laughs> you committed to that. You got to finish it and see it through. Mm. And I think that stuff has you know kind of carried me a long way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also I know we've been talking about your dad a while, but I I have to ask about your mom and her <laughs> role in in all of this. You talk about seven kids. A lot of you are offensive linemen, have been offensive linemen. Please tell me a little bit about her and how she kind of kept all of you guys in line. I feel like that is... <laughs> that a... seems like a very difficult yeah. yeah. No, she's the greatest. They're, so I'm, I'm one of seven. There's mm-hmm. five boys, two girls. Um, the youngest, Gwen, my sister, actually has Down syndrome too. So she's that's a full-time job in yeah. itself, her, you know, taking care of her. But no, she, she was she was incredible. I mean, couldn't have had a better childhood growing up. Um, a lot of mouths to feed. I, I think we 
I think it was two trips weekly to the grocery store and <laughs> each one was like three carts full oh, each my time. Word. Yeah. So it was that that's not a, that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> no, that's I one hundred percent believe. That's actually you. true. I remember going <laughs> with her sometimes. <laughs> but um yeah, I think the shortest guy in our family is like six two. So yeah, a lot, a lot of, of big people, <laughs> a lot of, you know, hungry mouths and football and you know, she <laughs> it's funny. She still um she still has questions that make me laugh about the game. <laughs> mom, you've been watching for like four decades now. <laughs> like, mom, how did you not pick this up? <laughs> right. But we like to give her a hard time. But um, no, she she's incredible. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> yeah, like I would just wonder, like, how many gallons of milk are they going right. through? Right. Like, like, yeah. You know, just like stuff like that. Just the the sheer volume to keep these massive human <laughs> beings massive i honestly think we all were raised on like milk and cereal <laughs> like, that was like the main source of <laughs> nutrition in our house growing up oh, sugary man. cereal and milk you know that's all you need as a yeah, kid hey it worked yeah <laughs> and so it's not only in your uh your immediate family but you also have cousins yeah yeah and clay matthews played for the um rams and for the packers for a long time. I started trying to do the research and then I gave up. So I'll just ask you, <laughs> have you ever gone one-on-one -on -one or heads up with him in an actual game? Yeah, many times. I think maybe five or six games. Really? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is there pre-game trash talk? Is it more competitive? <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, going up against your family member in an NFL game, that's pretty, you know, yeah, pretty no, remarkable. It, a little bit of, uh, I remember when my rookie year, he, um, we're playing up in Lambo Monday night and he walked by me and purposefully just, you know, <laughs> shouldered me really hard, like caught me. And I, I didn't even recognize that it was him that absolutely caught me off guard. And he laughed after what, looking back on it, pretty funny, but in the moment probably pissed me off. But, what are you doing, man? So I think one of the coolest things, and it, it's funny too, how similar it is to my dad. Cause obviously my dad's brother is Clay Matthews, Jr. Right. Clay Matthews, senior is my grandpa. Right. But, um, he had an amazing career, 16 years with, um, or 15 years with the Browns, and he finished his last four here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, my Uncle Clay. And my dad would always say the coolest thing going up against them was during the scouting report, coaches would be like, all right, hey, we got to look out for uh, Bruce's brother here. He's a real good player. And my dad would be in the back, like, that's yeah. right. Just a lot of pride in that. And it was funny, too, because um, going against Clay, Clay Matthews the third, mm -hmm. my cousin, um, same type of thing we'd be in meetings hey don't let jake's cousin you know get you here he's he's a good player he's gonna finish late you know towards mm -hmm. the whistle and, and you know stuff like that so um similar cool kind of feeling of like yeah man that's my cousin we gotta keep an eye out for him he's a good player <laughs> that's amazing i mean just like the family ties i mean it's mm -hmm. just impressive when you kind of lay it all out like yeah. that it, it is so so i feel like beckett is gonna be the starting left tackle for the Atlanta Falcons for a long time. It seems in the cards at this point. If if patterns tell you anything, yeah. you know, it's following yeah. a set pattern. It's a pretty good uh, uh, career path, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. But again, he can be anything he wants. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. No, yeah. no pressure. <laughs> now, to, we're to the end of the podcast. Yes. Um, we do a rapid fire segment, oh which is- I'm gonna be awful. Five, <laughs> five questions. Um, they're they're relatively easy questions. Relatively. They're not not too hard. Um, the first one is: Are you? Oh wait, are you ready? Yeah, you ready? Okay. It's just like for guys on the team stuff that happens at work. We're talking kind about of really? a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah. Right. No, it it. I promise we'll get through it okay. um, together. Together, we'll do this together. Um, your favorite play of your career? Oh my gosh. Um, I think. This is the top of top off the top of my head. Was it 2019? We played Philly at home, and uh, we had that screen to Julio where I I released yeah. out. Yeah, jumped oh. on that dude. And <laughs> <laughs> put, finished vividly. him in the ground, and Julio ran right behind me all the way for a touchdown. That that was pretty cool, especially to uh, you know get a little recognition. For, you know, <laughs> offensive linemen were not really catching the winning touchdown or anything, but hey, if you set someone up with a winning block, that's a big deal. Yeah. Have you ever asked Arthur Smith, given your quarterbacking history, <laughs> Caleb has some too, right? to ever either run a route or throw one in? You, you, you gotta at least pitch him on that. I think I'd be too nervous to do a <laughs> game, I don't know. I, Would you a lot of catch pressure. it or throw it? I'd, I'd prefer to catch it versus throw it. <laughs> I, I don't know, with all the 
tape and gloves and oh everything. yeah that's true oh, yeah. that's probably not going to be a good plan and even trying to catch it. it would be yeah <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of pressure <laughs> i'm getting nervous just thinking about it. <laughs> he's like i'm sweating now <laughs> oh question number two um what tv show are you binging or that you're just really into right now what are we watching right now i like how you say we because that's like that's oh, yeah. it, it, it's like we can't watch it without each other yeah um we're actually watching dancing with the stars right now <laughs> really? I I watching it. Oh. she's super into it there's times where i'm kind of on my phone looking away <laughs> i'm keeping up there's some talented people on there that's fantastic <laughs> yeah. um this one's a sweet one what's your favorite part about being a new dad oh man i know it's still new yeah um i catch myself a lot of times just holding him and like looking at him and w one he, he looks exactly like me he's like really? he's like a little awesome. mini clone of me so it's like <laughs> like the surrealness of that and seeing him I'm just like man this is incredible like what's he going to be like when he grows up just yeah. i'll catch myself just like staring at him and maggie <laughs> beck you all right like just in a trance like no just admiring him just probably probably that holding him looking at him thinking about you know what's this kid's life going to be like yeah I'm really excited to you know be his dad mm -hmm. who is the falcon that you hang out with the most oh my gosh um so probably jermaine effetti he was my mm -hmm. teammate at a and m you guys um, are neighbors, right? Yeah, he lives uh, right down the street from me in Houston. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, we train together in Houston, and um, he, Maggie, my wife, jokes that he's kind of become like an adopted child. For her. <laughs> he comes to like all our dinners together, like me and her. It's just yeah. like third wheels it and hangs out. And, um, no, but <laughs> it's been kind of cool having him, him here. Kind of surreal, too, because um, we haven't been teammates since 2000. 13 so yeah. it's been a while I, I think i remember like the, it was around we got to talk to you like right after he uh signed here and yeah. you you made the comment i think then you're like yeah this is really cool like yeah. we're teammates again like That's it's pretty buddy. awesome yeah. i mean texas a&m has been turning out some pretty significant offensive linemen for a yeah. while so and back when i was there <laughs> right right yeah and back when you were there it was like rock star territory because you guys had johnny uh yeah. manzel was the quarterback mm -hmm. and you guys were highly rated yeah wild not time. so much now <laughs> <laughs> now the dogs back. now the dogs are at the top baby yeah. go dogs okay last one um what is your biggest pet peeve um probably like loud noises like if like <laughs> if someone like slams a door hard, or this will get this is a good example <laughs> and maggie can attest to this when our dogs bark okay. like we have one that literally it sounds like a alarms going off like i'll like it, it freaks jump you out, yeah. and i freak it's almost like i have like ptsd or something <laughs> i don't know why but like loud noises like in quiet relaxing situations yeah. like freak me it bothers and i'll start yelling and screaming like, and she's like just calm down i was like i can't like it bothers me so much it makes me feel uncomfy it, if it was just a normal bark it wouldn't bother me but right. it's like he's like a bloodhound sounding like oh screaming like a banshee wow. so it, it it rubs me the wrong how way. many dogs do y'all have we have two we have two. a okay. golden doodle and a bernie's mountain dog gotcha wow and That's so awesome. when they bark if it's quiet yeah. We know it's only one of them. The other one, like, <laughs> the other can't one's bark fine. loud, so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I have found some bragging rights for you over your dad. He was taken number nine overall. That's pretty low compared to you at number six. I got it. So him. we've got something yeah. <laughs> over a first ballot Hall of Famer. So yeah. that's. And then I always joke with him too. I got a Pro Bowl before he did. So oh, right, yeah, see, okay. there you go. My one versus his fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it a year before he got his first. It's like uh, yes. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, Jake Matthews, thank you so much for yes. for uh, joining us. Next time we got to have Meggie, the real MVP. Oh, yeah. on this podcast. That'd be and, a good podcast. And it's good. she's it's, a lot better at talking. <laughs> <laughs> and so we can look forward to that. And we also look forward to you guys. Rate, review, subscribe to the Falcons Podcast Network. And we will be back with you again next week with another great guest.